So for patients who are diagnosed with small cell, the plan is to talk about chemotherapy treatments, radiation treatments. Before we come on to those, when you break the news to the patient that actually surgery is not the way to go for the overwhelming majority of patients, is that news welcome news to avoid an operation or do some patients find that a difficult concept to swallow? I think when we talk about limited stage small cell, we still classify that as a curative intent treatment. And so whether it is radiation and chemotherapy, uh, or again, the very exception of surgery, uh, it's still curative intent. So that keeps them grounded in that game plan. In non-small cell, where we see more of that surgery versus chemotherapy and radiation, I think there is more of an effect there. That and there's always some patients, aren't there, that are very keen to avoid an operation in any cancer and other patients who psychologically think, if it's cut out of my body, somehow right. the outcome's better. Or they can't see it on the right. CAT scan right. anymore. It must be gone. Right. right. You talked already about chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Is it always both together um, or is it, can it be either or? And how do you determine the best treatment for small cells? The standard treatment and the one that has been tried and true for the last couple decades is to give radiation and chemotherapy together. And frankly, and I don't like to always admit this, but the radiation is really important here because that is the additional therapy that is trying to add to that curative potential. So do not wait on the radiation. I have seen some places where they start the chemo because the radiation is gonna take a month or longer to plan. You can't wait that long. You gotta get the radiation going quickly. It's not about the chemo scheduling. The and in terms of the treatment protocol, we usually treat patients with radiation Monday to Friday, so it's usually treatment during the weekdays. What typically would be the number of radiation treatments patients would get for a small cell tumor? Yeah, so for small cell, it generally is about a month of radiation treatments. And just as you say, that five day on, two day off schedule that they never talk about, the, the Monday through Friday. Uh, the chemotherapy would occur pretty much every week. So you're talking about 20 treatments, roughly, radiation, would you say? Yeah, they get uh, about uh, 40 gray or so. Right. So 20 separate visits, Monday to Friday, you know, five days a week, four weeks of treatment. And the chemotherapy, exp explain a little bit more about what that involves. Yeah, so we uh, give two drugs with it. And uh, one of the drugs is given every three weeks, and the other drug is given on days one, two, and three every three weeks. And so they're divided up that way. Uh, a cycle entails an entire three-week period. So even though you only get the drugs on the first few days, you then let the drugs have their effects. It takes about 21 days for that to happen. And then a patient would come back, continuing their radiation throughout this, and we would check their blood counts. And as long as the blood counts looked good and the patient looked good, that's more important than the blood counts, then uh, we would give them the second cycle. And we generally keep going with the chemotherapy past the radiation for a total of four cycles. And not all chemotherapy is intravenous. Are you talking about pills? Are you talking about infusions? Yeah, for this situation, uh, Actually, one of the drugs can be given as pills, that is the atoposide, but we prefer to give it intravenously. So both the drugs are given intravenously. So this is obviously standard of care treatment that's been around for a long time. You've already touched on possible delays getting radiation treatment planned. Do you ever have any problems based on patient's insurance in terms of getting these drugs approved so that patients can start treatment in a timely manner, or is that not an issue? Luckily, with these drugs, we don't have as much of an issue with patients' insurance. I, I would love to say that insurance companies uh, are, are very easy to work with, and we are working in that direction, but it is still a struggle sometimes. But in this situation of limited stage small cell, the protocol is pretty standard, and we don't have too many hurdles there. Now, for so many cancers, when we talk about chemotherapy, that's for cancer that's already spread beyond the primary site. But here we're talking about chemotherapy 
for patients who still have disease that's confined to the chest, yes? Yes, it, uh, it is an enhancement to the radiotherapy. So they work together uh, and additively do better effects or synergistically. And is that because the chemo sensitizes the cancers to the radiation or is it because the chemo may or may not be treating microscopic cancer cells that have gone elsewhere in the body that the scans may not necessarily detect? I, I do tell people that is that these scans are not cells, cancer cell scans. Uh, it's like if you looked at a telescope at the moon and you would have an idea of what the moon surface is, but you know, it's not what you think through a telescope. You've got to step on it to actually see what the, uh, what the surface is. We know there could be cells elsewhere. And we, we like to think that the chemotherapy does in fact eliminate that risk or at least reduces that risk. But again, chemotherapy doesn't work against cancers 100%. We know that. And so we're hopeful that it catches or suppresses some of those, but it's mostly an effect in combination with the radiotherapy to give that additive boost.